What is up, Harvesters? Welcome back to the subscribers. And if you're new here, welcome to Hobby Harvest. My name is Ken. So today I want to talk about how we are going to pattern these deer and more specifically how we're going to pattern these bucks. And so you might think, am I too late to start doing this now? No, absolutely not. I don't start patterning my own deer until right about now and into about mid-September. That's why I'm getting this video out to you guys now. So what happens during the summer doesn't really matter because the bucks are in velvet they're in summer summer habitat and we're going to head into fall where all of a sudden that habitat's going to start to deteriorate we're going to head into fall and winter and of course those bucks are now hard horned so they will not go into thick areas of the woods when they're in velvet they don't want to hit that velvet on anything but now that they're hard horned they will start going into those thickest parts of the woods that's of course where we find them during hunting season so we can now finally start to see how they're going to behave during the actual hunting season from this point forward so in order to kind of understand this i want to get into what a buck does in a 24 hour period so we can start with that and kind of have that as a basis of knowledge going into the rest of the video and the other thing we need to keep in mind too is what a buck is going to do today depends on what happened a couple days ago so a buck if he was pressured a couple days a week two weeks ago will really change how he's going to behave so if we have this buck sort of pattern but then he gets it's pressure he's going to change that pattern for a few days a few weeks whatever depending on the buck and then he might return back to that old pattern again dependent on the habitat at that time so what he does is he's in his daytime bedding area that's where we're going to start and he's in that daytime bedding area he'll get up throughout the day and he'll browse around that daytime bedding area and he will feed in there so he'll lay in multiple specific beds in that bedding area i don't know if some guys kind of get that confused they don't pick just one specific bed they pick a bedding area this thing could be the size of a quarter acre an acre depends just kind of on the habitat in his specific area in the terrain so he's in there and he is going to sit there until we hit about that golden hour about an hour before dark that photographers love to get out and take pictures because the sun's setting the light is just perfect he's going to see that too that change in light and that's his alarm clock to get up and start heading to that nice soft leafy green food plot most likely if they're in the area or it's usually egg sometimes it is just like a corn pile or feeder or something as well but he wants to hit up that food source after he's been chewing on twigs and acorns and whatever else in his bedding area all day and so depending on how far his bedding area is from that food source he's going to hopefully get there before dark because if you're hunting off of that food source you'll hopefully have a shot at him before dark but if it takes him too long to get there because it's too far away or whatever, he will get there right after dark, but he's still going to be heading to that food source first thing as we get into dark. Now, he's going to feed on that for a while. Then he's going to head off to another food source. He's going to check out like his number two, number three, number four food source. A buck is going to have anywhere from 20 food sources and 10 bedding areas that he has sort of in the back of his mind that maybe sometimes of the year one's better than the other and this so this is why when you're planting food plots you want them to be desirable to the deer throughout the season so that's why we try to put diversity in them different things planted in them so that at any time one thing's popping while something else is maybe on the downhill slide but this buck's going to go around, he's going to check those other food sources. He may also go somewhere like typically like there might be apple trees in somebody's front yard or something that he's only going to feed on at dark. He's not going to go there in the middle of the day and feed in somebody's front yard. So there's just some places he'll go due to the cover of darkness, but also just due to there's very little human activity going on in the middle of the night also so that he may just feel safer to go to those places in the middle of the night. So he's going to go wander around. He's going to check out, you know, kind of keep a mental note of where the does are for when the, it's rut time. He's going to go keep an eye on like where these other food sources are. Maybe if this one gets busted out or just deteriorates too quickly or gets overcrowded with does or whatever. And then, of course, where those other bedding areas are. So we always hear that these bucks have like a three mile home range. Well, that's what he's doing at night is checking out his home range. The majority of his movement is going to be at night, not during the day. And every buck is a little bit different. So bucks are a lot like humans. You know, some humans are very regimented. They go to volleyball on Wednesday and they go hang out with their friends on Friday and then they go to the same bar and watch the football game on Sunday and it just so on and so forth. And then other people are kind of more willy-nilly and they 
maybe go, ah, oh, let's go on a road trip this weekend. Let's go check out this new place we've never been to before. And then other people, you know, maybe they do travel more. They don't just stay in the same city all the time, but they maybe have a cabin on a lake or something. And then they're just always only going to that cabin on the lake and then back home. And just, it's the same regimented like schedule, but it's just further away. And so bucks are exactly the same. Some bucks have a smaller home range. Some bucks have a bigger home range. Some bucks are more random with their movement. Some bucks are more consistent with their movement. And that's just something to keep in mind as you're trying to pattern each individual deer. And so after he's been out all night, he'll return to that daylight bedding area when it starts to get light out. So when the birds start chirping in the morning, it's starting to get light out. That again is an alarm clock for him to head back to that daylight bedding area. So if you can set up in like a thick area in a pit pinch point, great morning stand to target these bucks because he is going to move through the thickest area of the woods that he can find in order to get back to that daytime bedding area now that it's starting to get light out and so of course if you can find somewhere where he's forced to go through like a pinch point funnel whatever that is a great spot to sit and just wait and hope that he comes through there in the morning i've shot the majority of my bucks by sitting in places like that in the morning and then, of course, he's going to get back to that daytime bedding area, and this whole process starts over. So how we pattern these bucks is going to depend on where we put our trail cameras. So you want to put your trail cameras on food sources, although you're going to get a ton of pictures on a food source because deer sit on them for a long time. They really are going to fill up your cards and burn up your batteries if you do that. So I typically would prefer to set up cameras on like the entrance or the exit to a food source rather than the actual food source itself. Or you can set them up on stuff like scrape lines. If you find a scrape line, I've set up cameras on scrape lines so many times in my, I think I'm going on my 25th year of hunting now. And I have mixed results for how to pattern deer on a natural scrape line. I absolutely love putting in a mock scrape. Deer are much more consistent on a mock scrape than on a natural scrape line for whatever reason. We used to take a natural scrape line and we'd put like sticks or kick some leaves over the scrapes just to sort of like, we figured we were irritating the bucks that they would have to come kind of clear their scrape out again. And maybe that scared them away, but there were other times we would just leave them naturally untouched with a camera on them. And again, hard to get consistent buck action on those scrape lines. Sometimes we would get a consistent buck, but in general, it wasn't every buck in the woods that we get if we put out a mock scrape. You're going to get several bucks using a mock scrape well you're gonna get maybe just a fraction of that on a natural scrape line but on those mock scrapes i make sure to kick up all the stuff out of them rough up that dirt and even pee in them and that seems to really help to get that extra scent that earthy scent and urine scent coming back up out of them really seems to attract them and not just the bucks but the does and fawns too the bears the raccoons everything seems to be attracted to mock scrapes for whatever reason which doesn't really happen on the natural scrape lines but so anyway you get your cameras out there you get them especially i would set them up on mock scrapes get those mock scrapes out there and then you have to analyze your videos or your pictures that you're getting off of those cams so i like to put bucks into two categories your daytime bucks and your nighttime bucks and by daytime i will push that to about an hour after dark or say about an hour before it got light out that would still constitute a daylight buck just because he maybe got slowed up that day and didn't quite get there in time but if a buck's coming through at midnight 1 2 a.m that to me is a buck that is coming from so far away i don't really even consider him being one of my core bucks or a buck that i have a shot at any time other than maybe during the rut but I like focusing my hunts on more than just the rut because the season is so much longer than just that time of the year. And so if you don't want to use trail cams or you want to do something in addition to trail cams, we obviously go out in the woods. We're checking out for sign. Now, the thing is, is if you're seeing sign, don't go out there specifically to look for it around when you're trying to hunt. Because like I said earlier, if you spook one of these bucks, he may just completely switch what he was doing. He may not be back for a couple days or weeks. But if you're going out, you're heading to the stand and you see that there's like a fresh rub that bark is right on top of the leaves or on top of the snow or whatever, that's actually a sign that you probably just missed him. So you would actually want to come back in like two, three days, whatever you've patterned him to. You actually want to hunt old sign instead of new sign because that means that he hasn't come through and freshened it up lately and he's more likely to come there than where he just was. 
And so another way that we're patterning these deer is, of course, like we, I like to research GPS collared deer to see what a buck does in a given time. And one of the funny things that they found with GPS collared bucks is they will go on what they call like an excursion where these bucks will run around their home territory, which is like a three mile range typically. But every once in a while, a couple times a year, they will just jet straight out of that area miles and miles away and then just come straight back like from with the same line they left on for whatever reason it's almost like they're going on vacation or whatever maybe something spooked them out of the area or they're just trying to check out a new area in case they need it for whatever reason but for the majority of the year they are doing like circles around their home territory so like i was saying at the beginning of the video how bucks will get up out of their daytime bedding area and they will head to their favorite food source we need to keep in mind that that daytime bedding area and that favorite food source may not be the same every single day or especially every single week and he might just adjust a little bit he might switch his food source a little bit he might switch his bedding area a little bit and that can be due to pressure but it can also be due to just the natural habitat changing so if his bedding area was like leafy greens and so he had those to browse on plus they were giving him cover and then all of a sudden we get hit with like a really hard frost and all of those leaves drop off of those trees he's now left with just a couple twigs for cover and he'll of course go find a thicker area to bed down in so as we're patterning these bucks don't just assume what he's been doing for the past month is what he'll be doing in the future but you can always just hunt what was in the past and then keep an eye on this like year to year. You might know your property, you know, year to year. Keep a journal definitely. Keep those old trail cam pictures and videos in a folder so you can go back and, you know, kind of look at what happened this time last year and what happened the next week last year as well so that you can pattern these bucks better based on that but when i'm picking a spot to hunt i'm typically trying to pattern multiple deer i've never really hunted a target buck i'm head hunting the top 20 percent bucks on the property and that gives me a broader range of what i'm targeting so that i know that if this buck is coming through on this day but this one's a day behind him and this one's a day behind him when i sit i have a good shot at the one that's supposed to be there on that specific day. But if the other one's a day early or the other one's a day late, I still have a shot at putting all of them in that same day. And that's how like patterning deer can really get you the deer you want in front of you on the sits you take. Now, this all being said, I would much rather hunt the weather as well. So if you sit with a cold front, you are going to have deer, they get that chill in them because that cold front came through. They're gonna wanna move more than they did previous to that. So you're really gonna wanna target those cold fronts with this patterning and kind of put everything together to decide which stand you're gonna sit on a specific day. So all right, if you guys feel like you got some value out of this video, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy this one. And if you still wanna figure out where those buck beds are, go check out this one and I'll catch you guys on the next one.